Sure. There you go. Which one has the vodka in it? <laughs> in your mind, in your stomach, yeah. where was that feeling? In my chest area. After I didn't back up that laughter. It was like a cackling from the pit of hell, if that makes sense. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this old video right here, we're gonna look at a serial killer. Though not in the way you might expect. Elizabeth Wetlofer was a Canadian woman, again, who murdered at least eight people that we know of between 2007 and 2016 and was only finally caught when she confessed to police. And she had confessed this before multiple times but either no one took her seriously, or at least not seriously enough to put a stop to what she was doing. Elizabeth was an angel of death type serial killer, in that she worked in nursing homes and murdered the old people there. So we're gonna get knee deep into this story, and you know, whatever your views on like euthanasia are, uh, she was not doing that. She wasn't murdering people who wanted to die, she wasn't doing them a favour, like old people riddled with cancer, coffin dodgers, that kind of thing. She was murdering because she said she heard a voice telling her to kill. A voice, she said, came from the pits of hell. This is the case of Elizabeth Wetlofer, one of Canada's worst serial killers. Elizabeth Wetlofer, then Elizabeth Parker, was born in 1967 in Woodstock, Ontario. She grew up in a firm Baptist household, and was raised by quite strict and controlling parents. Growing up, she was described as being shy and awkward, and suffered much bullying in school. However, as she grew up, she became like cunning and cruel, something she was able to mask behind her smile. She realized she was bisexual as a teenager, but it seems no one had an interest in her. She wanted to study journalism in college, but she later developed an interest in uh, like medication, nursing, guidance, that kind of thing. She graduated from London Baptist Bible College with a bachelor's degree in religious education counseling. Her college years weren't any uh, easier than her previous ones, however, her dad, Doug, he was still very controlling of her. For example, after she attended a gay-friendly church with a girlfriend, uh, her dad Doug basically drove up and dragged her home because he wasn't having any of that. She was also at one point sent to one of those Pray the Gay Away camps. She later said she developed feelings of self-hatred and doubt around this time. Whoa, so you're saying being sent to a religious camp to try and pray away something that's not wrong with you would result in feelings of self-hatred and you having a negative view of yourself? Whoa, who would have thought that would happen? What are the odds? She then went on to study nursing at Conestoga College. Elizabeth was employed at numerous jobs in Woodstock, including a social services agency for disabled people. She married a truck driver named Donnie Wetlofer in 1997 and developed a number of problems, including bipolar disorder. Also around this time, she had her nursing license restricted after she was caught stealing medication for pain relief, Ativan specifically, she would have a near-fatal overdose on that medication. I mean, you know what's happening, so... so close. Elizabeth then began seeking help from other women online, and would actually develop a relationship with one. Donnie, her husband, saying this was sick, divorced her after this came to light. Elizabeth kept a name, met another woman named Sheila Andrews, moved in with her, and married. They continued to live together while Elizabeth found employment at a long-term care home called Caressant Care. And this is when the shit begins. Sorry about that. That's okay. There's too many people moving and shaking around here. You can't really keep track of who's doing what. You did a lot of different things, a lot of one-on-ones with people, mm -hmm. like in their own homes. Mm -hmm. 12 hour shifts, 8 hour shifts, okay. sitting with them. Okay. A lot of stuff I did was sitting with palliative patients. Right. Okay. So that would be tough. I, hey, I'm just okay. Yeah. Like, because mm -hmm. I knew they were going to die. Yeah. And it was just an opportunity to give the family a rest. Yeah, absolutely. So. Sheila would say Elizabeth had temper tantrums, tended to act somewhat childish, and showed no interest in helping Sheila's sick mother, who lived with them. 
I do that shit all day, I don't need to come home to it. In 2007, while working at Caressant Care, she began her murderous work. She bungled her first two attempts by attempting to inject two old ladies with an overdose of insulin. They both survived this attack, uh, but they later died, but Elizabeth was never charged with these uh, deaths. Elizabeth's first fatal victim was James Silcox, an 84-year-old World War II veteran and father of six children. She killed him on August 11th, 2007. Elizabeth actually told Sheila at the time what she had done, to which Sheila replied, um, something along the lines of, well, you need to stop doing that because if you keep doing it, you'll get caught. I'm glad Sheila really saw the problem here. Sheila would eventually leave Elizabeth, uh, something which presumably made her quite bitter and would really drive her to commit a lot more killings. And I was so angry. And it was like a voice said inside me, I'll use you, don't worry about it. And the different times that I have caused people's deaths or caused them discomfort through the, um, through the influence, I believe it was the influence of that voice or whatever it was. It wasn't a voice in my head, it was a voice in my ear. And when I would do it afterwards, I would hear like a laughter in my chest. So, started working for St. Elizabeth, and I was doing well, but it was a lot of pressure, and the way that, you know, that I've helped people to, to die has been through insulin. From 2007 to 2014, Elizabeth killed six more elderly patients by injecting them with insulin. She also attempted to kill two more. She would use insulin to commit her murders because it wasn't tracked the same way other drugs were. That's how uh, well she was able to get away with what she did for so long um, until she finally confessed to a real person who listened to what she was saying, but we'll get into that. The insulin in these places, it wasn't counted as other drugs were. She could easily get away with using as much of it as she liked. At night, she was the only registered nurse on site, so she had a lot of free reign. When she was doing this, she told the patients she was giving them vitamins. And if the doctor wants you to have a vitamin shot, that's what I usually say. Vitamin D for death. And this is not like a always, you know, a peaceful slip away kind of death. Um, overdoses of insulin can often lead to many hours of physical stress for the victims. Uh, so not necessarily a nice way to go. Do you ever see that episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer with that guy in the hospital who kills people? That's what I'm imagining. Something like that. Yeah, just kind of, okay, you're the next one to go. Again, there was always that red surging that I identified with God telling me this is what. Yeah, this is how you work for me. Did you ever try and fight that feeling? Later on, as you'll see. Mm -hmm. But when you got that feeling in your chest and, and stomach, would you would you directly go to get the insulin? Um, pretty much. Yeah, as soon as I had time with the rest of my job. How many patients would you be caring for during, on one shift? Thirty-two. You'd be responsible for all thirty-two. Yeah. 32. So each nurse would have 32? Yeah. Nurse, uh, our registered practical nurse, registered practical nurse. Okay. So that's a busy day. Mm-hmm. And I know we talked about it earlier, but again, just to revisit that, do you think that's something that played into this? I think the so. The stresses of the job? I, oh, yeah. I definitely think Because you have a lot going on in your life. Yeah. I definitely think the stress played into it. Maybe it made, me, made my mind more susceptible to Elizabeth also confessed again in 2011 to a teenager who worked at Crescent Care, and nothing happened. In 2014, she confessed to her pastor and his wife, and later that same year, she would also confess to an ex-boyfriend. Again, nothing happened. She also confessed to a lawyer that same year. You can guess what happened. Jack shit. 
the lawyer, like Sheila, actually advised her to keep it quiet. Maybe, maybe don't say that, and uh, didn't say anything to the police. So essentially, allowing the killings to continue, which they did. I think I was told to do by the lawyer. What's that? Take it to my grave and not tell anyone. So you confided in a lawyer as well? A long time ago, yeah. In 2014, she left Crescent Care. Well, left. Crescent Care actually filed a termination report with Ontario's nursing regulator that was so long that they couldn't fit the infractions Elizabeth had done onto the form. She was crass, inappropriate, and made sexual advances at some student nurses. But after the Ontario Nurses Association intervened, Elizabeth got $2,000 as part of her union settlement and a letter of recommendation. She then began to work part-time at other facilities and at patients' home, where she injected three more people with insulin, killing one. During these years, she saw the same psychiatrist every month. He prescribed her two major drugs, one for obsessive compulsive disorder and depression, and the other was an antipsychotic. Obviously, that wasn't helping her, and on September 16th, 2016, Elizabeth entered herself into an inpatient drug rehabilitation program at the Centre for Addiction and Mental Health. And then I decided, um, well, whatever Friday that was, that, like, I did a lot of looking into how I could get help, because I realized I needed help with whatever it was. Because part of me had started to believe that it was the devil, mm -hmm. and part of me thought it might be God, but the purpose of my life. And uh, I know the doctor asked me those questions, but I didn't answer them because I was so ashamed. But I just, uh, I didn't want this to keep going on, so I quit both jobs. While there, Elizabeth confessed to the staff about her crimes, who in turn informed the College of Nurses of Ontario, and later the Toronto Police Service. It, it just felt so stupid. Elizabeth then sent a personal email to said college, resigning from her position and confessing her crimes, and that she was being investigated by police. She then personally called an investigator from the college, and had the Centre for Addiction and Mental Health staff fax a four-page confession. In October of that year, Elizabeth admitted to her crimes, and was charged with eight counts of murder, and in January 2017, Six more charges were added, four counts of attempted murder, and two counts of aggravated assault. Well, there were other people that didn't choose to die. Prior to James? Prior to James. Okay, and are they documented the on one, here? He's the first one who died. Right. Back here? But there's some other... People who didn't die. I honestly felt like I wanted to use me. In your mind, in your stomach, in where my, was that feeling? In my chest area. After I did it, I got that laughter. When would you feel that laughter? Would you feel it right after you injected it, or once the person passed away? Um, both. Yeah. Both. It was like a cackling from the pit of hell, if that makes sense. Did the cackling continue? Um, when you met the young, was injected with insulin? Um. After that two year break? Yes. Yeah. Elizabeth said she was tormented by voices in her head, yet at no point did she lose the ability to distinguish right from wrong and, you know, murder from not murder. Elizabeth knew what she was doing, like, at all times. Elizabeth Wetlaufer was dressed in a prison issue, dark green sweat top, and stood slumped forward as a jail guard positioned her in front of the camera. Her so-called video appearance was signaled live into a Woodstock courtroom where there were many gatherers, including police and at least one of the victim's families. The whole thing lasted less than a minute. In fact, at one point, Wetlaufer asked, that's it? Andrea Silcox watched it closely, clutching the Bible her dad carried while fighting in World War II. Police claim the 85-year-old was Wetlaufer's first victim and just days after being admitted into a Woodstock care facility for seniors. My father was only in uh, the facility for in total of eight days and that just didn't seem right to me. The Silcox family wanted an autopsy but were told it isn't going to happen. The coroner said he lived in long-term care, he was 85 years old, why bother? Personality tests conducted on her concluded she showed significant signs of borderline personality disorder 
including an unstable mood, impulsiveness, a fear of being abandoned, unstable relationships, and anger problems. She was also reported as being mentally unstable and having a drug addiction. And she was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder. I no longer know who I am because Elizabeth Wetlawfer consumes my life. I don't understand why she was bound bent and determined to kill me. On top of the eight patients Wetlawfer did kill, she also tried to kill Bertram and others. Bertram is the only one still alive to talk about it. I get, oh, she's in jail, don't worry about it. It's over. It's not over. We as the victims are not weak. I'm, we need care. And that doesn't mean we don't matter anymore. During her trial, Elizabeth waived her right to a preliminary hearing and admitted all charges. She was sentenced to eight consecutive life sentences with no possibility of parole for 25 years. An investigation into how this happened was launched. But the evidence showed that no one suspected that Elizabeth was intentionally harming those under her care. Not the residents or their families. Not those who worked alongside her. And not those who managed or supervised her. And inspectors also learned that another 180 residents died during her shifts. Now obviously, Elizabeth, she worked in a nursing home. She worked with a lot of old people. Some were going to croak anyway. But I do think that eight over, you know, nine years is an extremely low number. Again, I, I, I feel terrible for the, for the people that are going to find out in days and weeks to come about what actually happened to their loved ones, right? Yes. Um, I feel horrible. Um, if there was ever anything I could do so that nobody did this again, I'd do it. But in your career path, that isn't listed on these four documents, or these four pieces of paper. That you'd be responsible for the death. No, absolutely not. And if we were to tell you that we've come across some fairly significant or suspicious uh, deaths at other nursing homes. Where I've been? Right, what would you say to that? I'd say it wasn't me. So there's no one else involved? No. I do think, and the detectives probably think too, that she killed a lot more people than the eight she admitted to and the, all the other attempted murders she had committed. Now this is a case, as with all serial killers, of a very sick individual who preyed on some of the most vulnerable people in society. She probably saw herself as, you know, putting people out of their misery. She wasn't. She was killing people to take out the anger of the shit she was going through in her own life. Not to mention, you know, the fact that she was the crazy person who heard, like, the devil speaking in her ear. She was doing it for gratification. And the scariest thing is that if she hadn't confessed, she may never have been caught and could have continued killing. Now, in uh, inspectors, investigators say, you know, changes have been put in place in these systems, so this kind of shit doesn't happen again. But, as I said, eight over nine years seems low to me. Thank you so, so much for watching this video on Elizabeth Wetlaufer. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to see some more of my videos, go ahead, please. And if you'd like to see future videos, subscribe if you'd like to. I will see you as always real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.